Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I know, it's been two years since I uploaded a video on this channel. Sadly, I think this channel is basically dead. I've focused on making more films on our main Zebcast channel, and I started a new channel in Spanish about history. This channel is far behind on subscribers, viewers, and my own personal happiness. Therefore, I have decided that this will be the final video ever on Zebcast Games, and I will end it with a memorial tour of a Minecraft PS3 country that many of you that watch, or watched, this channel formed part of, called Wardia. It was a type of RPG civilization experience in which we all had our own nation and we would develop it and give it life, like a real country. It functioned very well for a long while, with many players being citizens and with a good system, but eventually we slowly started switching off and Wardia was left in the darkness, never to be heard from again. I've never made a video on this channel about this Minecraft country, but I think it's time to reveal it to the entirety of YouTube as a special goodbye to Zebcast Games and Wardia. Here we go. So for you viewers that don't know about it, or have forgotten with the passing of time, Wardia is a constitutional monarchy, so like a kingdom but with democracy, much like the UK or Spain, which is split into five city provinces, or regions, or states, or whatever you want to call them. Zeblington, the capital of the country, Wolfton, Jangelia, New Princing, which was never actually completed, and Snowdon, which is on the other side of a great wall which separates our country from land belonging to Denmark. We also had a kind of colony in the Sahara Desert in Africa called the Wardian Sahara, in which Arabic was the second language. Nobody ever got to really live there, and it only had one town, Lahyub. If my memory is correct, it doesn't actually count as a city province because the players and users that formed the government never really approved it as one. Therefore, the Wardian Sahara was just a piece of territory in Africa that just happened to belong to our empire. To start off this memorial tour, we will sail into the harbour of Wolfton from across the sea. I mean, we could just fly and land at Canine Gulf Airport, but I thought that sailing into the kingdom, the old-fashioned way, would make it a little more epic. As we sail towards Wolfton, we can see Prince Aston Island on our right, a small uninhabited island that belongs to the city province of Wolfton. The curious thing about this island is that we can find old ruins, possibly remnants of an ancient civilization that used to live there. And here we are. Welcome to Wolfton. Wolfton is the oldest province and city in Wardia. The city is a seaport, and sailors usually anchor here and enjoy some of the local fish. Here we can see the house of one of our most beloved players, Janice Joe, and the general store, which was like your small, handy Walmart. It's a rather small city, but at the same time, very beautiful, and many of us actually ranked it the cleanest and nicest city in Wardia. Over here we can see the governor's residence, with the regional flag hoisted on its roof. And the governor of Wolfton is, at least when we left it, X-22 Sinu. Just next to it, on the left, is the famous Museum of Wardian History, which had lots of different stories to tell its visitors. You could find out facts like when Wardia was founded. In our chronology, it was 1930. I know Minecraft didn't exist then, but it's for the effect. And who were the different kings who ruled throughout our history, and so much more. Also, if we continue down the old road, which was the first road ever built in the country, we can go to Chapelton, which is a small little village also belonging to Wolfton, in which no players actually lived, but it was simply for country realism, if you know what I mean. Through this archway, we enter the city province of Zeblington, without a doubt, Wardia's crown jewel, the capital of our great kingdom. It is home to the three highest organisations of the state, the Royal Palace, which is the symbol of the monarchy, the home of the king and his family. The House of Commons, which is the democratic representative of the different city provinces in the country. It's formed by the regional governors of said provinces, who are voted in in local elections and join forces to vote on national laws and debate about um, important political stuff in the debate room upstairs. And the army, which was led by General Yoda Force 9, I'm afraid I can't show you all in there, authorised personnel only. And of course, everything that makes Wardia, well, Wardia, 
is written in stone right here in the Room of Rules. I guess you could call it the Constitution of Wardia, which establishes all the laws, rules and regulations of our democracy, and explains to the people how every system works. I think it was obligatory for any newcomer in Wardia to visit this place upon entry. Zeblington is clearly separated into two areas. There's the old area, which is home to most of the popular landmarks, like the beautiful St. Jeb's Cathedral, which belongs to the Church of Notch. Remember guys, the country is Minecraftian religion. And the Wardian Coliseum, which was a huge amphitheatre. This over here is the governor's residence, with the regional flag on its roof. The governor of Zeblington is Nick6739, who is also the founder and manager of the Pedersen Bank, the largest bank in the country, which kind of acts as Wardia's central bank. As we fly over the bridge crossing the River Twine, we have the newer, modern area of the city, which is kind of uglier in a sense, and was just full of tall buildings. However, there is one building which shines above the rest in this area, and this is the Aqua Terrae Business Tower which is the headquarters of a huge redstone business that sold basically anything to do with redstone to creators and tech lovers. As we leave the main city of Zeblington via the highway, we can see a small little village on our left. This is Tree Trunk, which is part of the Zeblington city province. No players actually lived here, and it's mainly for decoration, like Chapelton in Wolfton. If we keep going straight ahead, we have another small village called Plyjudge, which is actually quite a nice little countryside town, but sadly with no economic importance. And as we take this turn with the highway, we enter the unfinished city province, the city of New Princing. New Princing was originally going to be much, much bigger, the biggest city in Wardia, in fact, with skyscrapers and businesses like everywhere. I think it was even going to have its own airport too but I guess things never worked out or got cancelled because we all stopped playing eventually. It never had any citizens, but there are quite a few structures that were completed or were about to be completed. We can see Giannis Joe's fish and chip shop, which was the only business that actually did well in New Princing. Some landmarks include, or were going to include, the Grand Imperial Bazaar, which is the tallest building in the country, the symbol of the unfinished city, and the Pierre Mont Grand Hotel, a five-star hotel that is still considered under construction. I mean, just look at it. It hasn't even got a roof. However, New Princing's province did have a village that was completed and did actually look nice. And this is Merry Kale. Again, what do you want me to say about it? It's another decoration village with no players or businesses. Nothing really interesting to see here, guys. Sorry. And now, we move on to the Rebel region, the tropical paradise of Wardia, the famous Jangelia. Despite being very poor and having a terrible economy, Jangelia is the second highest populated city province and is naturally beautiful. We can see some apartment buildings and restaurants around here, another Pedersen bank over here. A curious thing about Jangelia is that its people have their own dialect and form of English based on the Jamaican accent called Jangelian Patois. It's written all over the signs around here, as you can see, here's some examples. This over here is the Haza of Damgovernieta, or the governor's residence, with the regional flag on the roof. And the leader who lived in it is Liu Taurus. And we can also see the house of Todo Gamer, who is my good friend Jack Videra, right here in Jangelia. I'm sure most of you Wardian veterans remember Jangelia's fight for independence, right? Players and users living in Jangelia are quite the separatists, and many want, or wanted, independence from Wardia. However, we did never let that happen, did we? Wink wink. However, despite its poverty, Jangelia has beautiful beaches and jungles, and I remember people would always come to hang out at Lagoon Beach just over here. As you can see, we've got the free towels and the small beach bar over there. Oh, and also, another fun fact about Jangelia, it's the only city province in which weed is legal. <laughs> yes, we we used poison. We had a we used a potion of poison and potion of slowness, and mixing them together, we we'd say it's weed. And this here in the bushes is a ganja farm. I can't remember exactly who set it up, but he definitely gave an almost Jamaican look to it. Speaking of ganja and weed. The Rastafari religion is also very prominent in Jangelia, and is the second largest religious group in terms of population in the whole kingdom in general. Deep in the heart of the jungle, 
there's a Rastafari village called Patwe, which is very, very poor, and is voluntarily cut off from the rest of society. It's a protected indigenous village in which the original inhabitants of Jangelia before its conquest are allowed to practice their Rasta faith. This here is a Rastafari church, the Patwe Church of Il Selassie, forgive me for my terrible Jamaican accent, which is in a bit of a deteriorated state, probably because of some players smashing it up. But the villagers here live happily away from Wardian society. In the deep south, the coldest area of the continent, we have the exclave of Snowden, or Blomstren in Danish. Snowden is a territory of Wardia behind the wall. It's a highly strategic place, as it's closely limited by Danish land. This is why entry into Snowden is strictly monitored, even though it's our territory. And there's an ID verification checkpoint at the entrance, which you can see here. As for the actual town, Snowden had Danish as a second language because we conquered it from Denmark years and years ago. The people actually want to rejoin Denmark, but of course, we won't ever let them. This is the governor's residence, and the governor of Snowden is Rockaboy Sixter. Snowden also has its own airport, which is a very rubbish airport to be honest, which hardly, it hardly had anything good about it. From it, you can fly to and from Wolfton and the Wardian Sahara, and that's pretty much it about it. Also, I'm technically not supposed to show you guys this, since this is a military zone, but I will anyway. Here, we have a TNT missile launcher and other top secret weapons of mass destruction, in the event of another invasion or attack from the other side of the Great Wall. And here, we are about to end the tour. But I would like to show you guys one last little surprise, which hardly any of you has ever seen, and now will for the first and last time. The Royal Palace, the home of the monarchy, and yes, my house. As we can see here, we enter through the door and we have what's called like the main hall of the palace. This is the throne room, which was hardly ever used really, but I sat here and sometimes I had Prince Aston ha um, sit here with me. Um, over here on the right is the ex-king's quarters, which was the living residence of the previous king before me, Gary I. This is his office. He's not king anymore, but he has his own office. This is their bedroom. There's not really much to say about that. Um, then we advance towards the kitchen and the dining area over here, which is where we all had dinner. The royal family sat down at dinner. Down here we have the servant's kitchen, which is just full of villagers. Nobody actually made my dinner. I'm not going to make players make my dinner for me, am I? Over here is the prince's apartment, the prince's quarters, his own little garden there. This is where Prince Aston lived, who is the heir to the throne. Now, leaving here, we go upstairs to see more of what this palace holds. Over here we have, like, the Royal Gallery. There on the wall we have the crest of my family, the, the shield of the House of Woodward, like our coat of arms. Over here we have the passageway with some guards guarding my office. This is where it all happens, guys. This is my office, where I sometimes would do my speeches to the nation, and there's my fireplace. This is where I live, the royal apartment, where I sleep. But of course, you, re what, you really thought I was going to show you where I live and, and sleep? No. Just no. I'm afraid I can't do that. That's closed off to the public, guys. But I can show you my office, which is right there. And now we'll be heading upstairs to, yes, there's even more. This is the Grand Hall, which has a beautiful balcony with a view of the city, which is right here. You can see the old part of the church of um, St. Jeb's Cathedral. And then passing over here, we have some armor. And this is the audience room, which sometimes I would receive other leaders and presidents from other countries. And I have a little lounge here and a guest room. Sometimes I had other princes or kings um, sleep in there when they're guests of mine. And there you are, guys. That is a special tour of the Royal Palace, which sadly, you will never get again. And now, we will end this tour of Wardia and this channel 
by sailing down the River Twine towards the wide, endless sea. Thank you so much to everyone who supported Zebcast Games throughout these years and helped make a marvellous Minecraft country. The time has come. Goodbye everyone.